All right, welcome to the next lesson. In this one, I decided to kind of isolate the water simulation training in a, the simplest form possible. So if you haven't done this before, then you will have some initial beginner level training. Then we'll move you up from inter intermediate to more of an advanced level. So you can start kind of creating these very custom water simulations. And Blender does a lot in that area. Now it does take up a lot of resources, but you can kind of dumb down the resolution. And what I'll do is scale this up while I'm explaining. Just kind of scale up your cube to any size you see fit. As um, long as it's going to be just a little bigger than what we're going to put in, which is a UV sphere. So I'm going to shift A, drop in a UV sphere. Now that sphere is just hanging out in the middle and we can't really see it. So I'm going to hit Z and move over to wireframe. Now it's very important to understand that when you're doing this uh, water simulation like this, you're going to need to be in wireframe mode. So I'll just hit G and Z and kind of move this up. Now this is going to be the inflow device, the sphere, or whatever you choose. It could be a monkey head. It doesn't matter. The, um, the sphere and or inflow device needs to be inside of a domain. And so if it's inside the domain, Blender will read this area as where the water is going to flow. So what you can do is come over to the physics properties tab and with the cube selected, I'm just going to click on fluid. And now it says none, just click domain. Now this is going to be where you do about 90% of your work. There's a lot of stuff in here and we'll go over it one thing at a time. So under domain, it'll say gas or liquid. So we're going to choose liquid. The resolution is 32. That's very, very low. The water wouldn't necessarily look good, but that's where we can leave it for now. And if you scroll down, you'll see time steps, minimum, maximum, don't change any of that. And time scale and the CFL number don't change any of that. That's another tutorial on its own. So a lot of these you can leave at default. Border collisions, you can collapse that and leave that alone. Now what you are going to want to do um, is kind of skip past liquid and skip past the bandwidth and all these different things. You don't have to learn any of this just yet. So hopefully you're relieved. Um, what you want to do is come all the way down to mesh and select it. And then under that drop down menu, you'll have a couple things in here. One is the up res factor. This is one of your most important things. For your beginning setup, just hit one if you've got a super slow computer. Otherwise, leave that alone. And what that'll do is just what it says. It is going to bring up the resolution factor and make that water look amazing and bring f tiny little fine particles. And if you added spray or foam or anything else to the simulation, then you'll have the option to see all those particles. And then you've got the particle radius, which is set to two. So if you brought that a little bit lower, um, you'll probably crash out or just your computer will just lock up. So we want to get uh, a little further down here Just skip on down to catch your um, I just call it the catch file. No, that's not what it, how it's pronounced, but I just call it the catch file or cache, however you wish to say it. And you'll have a couple of things going on. You'll have the frame start, which if you have a timeline, I'm set to 400. This is set to 250. So if I wanted my simulation to be down to 400, then I have to enter in 400 over here and match it over here. But no matter what your timeline says, your bake area is going to be whatever it reads. So now for type, this is going to be um, how the simulation is baked effectively. So what we want to do is forget about replay or modular, just select all. And then now you have a bake option. So what you would want to do is click bake from here, but we don't have 
our inflow device set. There's no physics attached to the sphere. So if we come over and just click fluid on that, this one's much easier. Go from none to flow, and now we have an option. And so the, sim the simulation could go a number of ways. We have smoke, fire and smoke, fire, and then liquid. And now we want to check out the flow behavior. What is this supposed to do? It's just geometry, but we want this set to inflow. And then you can choose a few different things. Uh, if there's holes in the mesh, you can select is planar. So if you chose something or you have a hole in the mesh or it's not a closed mesh, that's what you would select and then match that in the domain. But right now this is a closed device, so we're just doing this the simplest form. So now you could select the actual domain and what we'll do is we'll bring this to 50 frames in the timeline and you scroll all the way back down to the cage area and for the end we'll just put in 50 and now we'll hit bake it takes just a quick moment to actually do the bake and my um, timeline was over here in 400 for some reason right right so what I'm going to do is kind of middle mouse wheel that up and expand my 50 and bring this to 1. And what I can see is I've already got a nice little water simulation here. You kind of get an idea. This is only 50 frames, so it really shouldn't uh, crash anybody's computer out. Now you can go over to solid mode. You can kind of see what's going on here. So from here you've got the actual simulation. You could just play that. You see, it actually, uh, within Blender, it's, water sims are pretty good. And so now this has been baked, you could actually shade this smooth. You could add a subdivision to it. But the thing you want to do, and you can just click Free All. And if you have a faster PC, you can come up here and press 64 for your, let me go a little slower. You press 64 for your resolution divisions. You could even go to 128 and I think we'll just go over here to the green triangle and drop down normals and click auto smooth because I can't stand seeing the shading errors and go back over to physics. Now if I scroll on down to the up res factor and put that back to two and I can leave this at 50 and then I'll just hit bake. And see, it's going a little bit slower now. And that's even on a 3060 NVIDIA. This is a, pr it's a pretty fast, I'd say this is the one of the second fastest um, laptops out. Now you can see the detail level has increased considerably. I mean, that's, that's a heck of a lot better. So now if you were to play this, it looks a lot more like liquid. Now just to kind of play around with it, if you want to go to the EV, go to materials in the blender kit and then type in water. Just to go ahead and get used to it, you can grab one of these. The tropical water usually ends up looking the best. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, tropical water shader. So I'm just going to drop that right on top of there and then hit play. It doesn't actually look too bad. It looks like tap water, though. That wasn't really what I was hoping for. Pool water animated. Don't tr don't click on anything animated. It's just going to slow your PC down. Procedural ice. All right, so just back over here. I'll go with basic water 2.0. Let's have a look at that. Okay, this looks like it's going to look a lot better in cycles. Yeah, so that looks pretty nice. There's not really enough lighting in there to get good details. Let's see if I can just drop, close some of that out. The screen's looking kind of convoluted. And my 3D cursor's up here. So Shift S, cursor to world origin. Shift S, select it a cursor. I'm going to scale this up. G and Z to kind of bring it down and then I can get a much better look at my water. Maybe add a little quick material to this. Turn it down to gray. 
a slight gray. Now I can actually see my water a little bit better. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. And that's playing out in cycles pretty nice, actually. So the if it doesn't play well, then you're, you're, um, you're not GPU rendering. Or your computer's insanely slow. It's time for an upgrade. But I know everybody cannot do that. Not everybody can afford it. I had a, a non-GPO computer for the first six months I was learning Blender. And so that was really tough, but I still made it. Or you're texture heavy and you've got the wrong type of texture on this. Now, uh, for the effector, you don't have to um, worry about this. You can make this thing... For the um, the inflow device, you can make it like look like a rock, right? So that way, when we go back in, and we are going over some of the very important steps uh, that we're going to undertake to make our waterfall and make the domain look like what we want it to, then you know it'll, it'll look like a rock coming out. So you can just put other rocks around it as well. Now, I'm going to show you one more thing here. If I go back to the physics area, you can't do anything that, with this while it's baked, so you'd have to hit free all. And do be aware that every time you bake under the cache file system, you are somewhere on your PC, you are dumping a ton of fluid bake files. So if your PC is logging out really, really bad, then you're going to want to choose where this goes and then potentially go in and delete all those bakes. Just be careful that you know you, you do a final bake after you've done those deletions, so that way you don't actually delete your main bake. So now, if I take this setup and just hit Z, or do my Z swipe to wireframe, now what I can do is I can grab this, I could jump into edit mode and I'm gonna hit W and just go ahead and subdivide this and then shift R just a couple of times so it has some actual mesh in it. And now we've got this. <clears throat> and what I wanna do is kinda shrink this down and bring it inside of the domain. I'm gonna come over and add fluid physics to it and I'm gonna call this an effector and so now this effector is set to collision by default and you see there is an is planner setting in here as well so if you're familiar with that by now hopefully and now if I grab the domain I'm gonna come back to 32 on my setting just so this bakes quickly and now I'll go ahead and bake this And what you can see is, if I come back over to solid view, is that it's literally just going right through the plane. That's not what we wanted, right? We put that in there to catch it. And so I'll just hit pause on that, click free all, jump back over to Z mode. I'll grab this effector and I killed the fluid uh, by accident. so. We'll call that effector again just for the tutorial purpose, just so you can see it perfectly. And I'll go ahead and bake that. Yeah, see, so it just goes straight through. Not very good. I'll free that, grab my effector, click is planner. Now grab the domain. Come on down. And now we can click bake all again and see what happens between our inflow, our domain, and our effector. Wait a minute, it stopped. Okay, so it looks like we've got the result we wanted. Let's switch back to solid mode and see what's happening here. I'll go ahead and hit play. Oh, look at that, see? So now you can see what the effector actually is going to do is allow us to control what the water actually flows on and or through. So if I was to free all of this, and I'm just gonna hide my domain for a second, and I'll grab this and jump into edit mode, 
I'm going to switch over to Vertex so that way I can select a few of these. I'll grab the center and I think I'll just shift alt select the entire center row and hit G and Z. Where's my proportional editing? Let's hit O to turn that on, G and Z. Kind of bring this out a little bit. That's good. Now just grab this one. How about these three? And I'll hit G and Z and kind of bring that up a little bit. And I'll hit Alt H to unhide the domain. Come back over and now I'm in the physics tab again. I'm gonna go ahead and hit bake all. And let's see how this goes. Wow, look at that. We are now guiding the water into a completely different way because we modeled. Now obviously it, it goes out of bounds. You can't see anything. We haven't baked that much of it. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could just conceptually bake 100. And then I'll put my timeline to 100. And now hit bake. And if this is running pretty fast for you, then you could do three, four hundred and get get the true final flow of how this is going to look. So let's start off at one. It looks pretty good. It is kind of flowing over the edges, which is all right. So you see what you can do, and that's the edge of the domain. And so that really doesn't help us a lot. So what we want to do is free this, and let's think about what we could do with this domain to really make the water flow the way we want. So I could jump into edit mode, and just for the fun of it, I'm gonna hit K and grab the knife tool. Don't use it enough. And the knife tool will just left click on one edge, and then it'll snap to the other automatically. Left click again, hit enter. And now I've got this cut. It's kind of crooked, but it doesn't really matter for the purpose of the tutorial. And now I've got this cut, I can extrude this out, and if it's not on the Y axis, or it's doing some weird thing, you just hit Y and bring it out if that's the direction you're facing. And then I could rotate this on the X axis, just for the fun of it again, and jump back into object mode and click bake. Wow, look at that, now our water's flying off the edge which is pretty cool. So now we're finding out ways to control and directionalize the water flow. Now I don't have to have it flowing back on itself. I can control all of that with the domain and I can control it with the effector. But now what I want you to do is imagine that mountain is there and that's the effector and it's just rolling down the mountain in the shape that we sculpted and that's how we're gonna do it. So that's it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next lesson where we actually put the waterfall together on the mountain. Thanks for watching, stick it out, and you're doing a great job.